Hey there, fellows. What have I got for you today? Well, this here thing, representing the Gorky automobile plant. This right here is a Gaz 31105, which means it has a few benefits that might turn out to be useful in the build that we're looking to put together, in that it's wide. Anyway, here's the idea. Wait, hold that thought. So remember, Gennady, with the four engines? Well, here instead of an inline 16, we'll be making a V12 using a lot of motors. We just need to go buy them. Since, believe it or not, we don't have any spares lying around. We have a car, but we're lacking engines. So let's go get those and figure it out from there. Combining three lot of motors into a makeshift V12. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. All right, fellas, so in order to make all of this a reality, we've gone out and purchased three of these wonderful bulletproof engines. Were we doing 90 Ks in the city? With them pressed against the frickin' cab? It's all the roads, man. The roads, right. I hear ya. So the engines, we bought these without any accessories, but we have all of them anyway. And we might need to modify some things here and there, so... Though I really doubt it. We'll see how it comes together as we go. But for now, let's unload them, have a closer look and show you what's up. All right, fellas, let me show you exactly what we've got on our hands. These engines that we sourced, we gave them a clean, had a closer look. Now we know what's what. From looking at them, we can tell that they'll 100% be functional. Though it's not like they have any options other than starting and running. So 107%. Working on these is sort of our thing. Okay, so we have a car and everything else, but there is a certain nuance to discuss. We were looking to put together a V12, but as a matter of fact, that's a V12 between three different engines. Each of these lot of motors has a total of four cylinders, and after a bit of consideration, it seems as if we'll be putting together not so much a V12. The plan was to sort of install one engine so that it sits vertically, as it was meant to, and the other two were supposed to sit at an angle. So two engines were going to form a V-shape, but as a matter of fact, two engines are going to contain eight cylinders, effectively making it a V8, not a V12. And if you look at what all three engines are going to come together to form, this won't even be a V-engine, more of a... Honestly, I've never seen anything comparable, but it looks like we'll be making a Y-shaped engine configuration. So it appears as if we'll be putting together a Y-12 motor. I mean, for all intents and purposes, we'll still be labeling it a V-12. Since that was the plan from the very beginning. In any case, when you've got the engines sitting in that sort of Y configuration, the thing is... We do have a few ideas on how to combine the torque from all of these engines. Since, as I'm sure you remember, Gennady, as the people decided to call him, with all of those engines being welded together at the crankshaft, into a sort of singular, long-ass, straight-as-an-arrow inline-16, yeah, we had an inline-16 going in that thing. But that's not how it's gonna work this time. Here, in order to take these engines and assemble them into a Y-shape, this already implies certain difficulties, which, to be honest, is something that we prefer to avoid. We do have an idea how to connect everything using some belts. The benefits are obvious. First off, it's not going to be as noisy. Second, I gather it won't be as safe. Third, it slightly simplifies the process. Correction, it greatly simplifies the process. Since in order to make a connection based on belts, what do we need to do again? Correct, machine three pulleys. Now, as I'm sure you realize, connecting three of them 
Connecting three engines using a belt mechanism is way easier. Yeah, it'll just be much simpler. One of those engines will be the primary unit, with the gearbox and the clutch attached to it. Then you've got the driveline going all the way to the rear axle. But then you also have two additional supplementary motors forming a V-shape. And with the help of those belts, we'll connect them to the primary engine sitting in the middle. The other argument for connecting all of them using belts would be, well, in my opinion, which has been proven through practice, this will definitely be the safer option. Also, if it so happens that they begin to slip, we can always, you know, adjust the tension on the belts and be good to go. If some sort of vibrations or gyrations occur while running gears, Avoiding that sort of scenario when the vibration leads to teeth binding would be just so much more complicated. It'll just be an unnecessary headache. Okay, fellas, we sort of understand the concept of what we're doing, but if I'm being completely honest, it'd be cool to receive some feedback from you guys. We do read through the various comments that people leave us, so maybe if anybody has some ideas as to how exactly you can even join these engines together in the first place, we'd love to hear them. Some thoughts on how to get them to work together so that they can all successfully transfer their full torque and horsepower to the rear wheels to make this into a really fast car. Now, I get it, this isn't really the Garage 54 way in that we didn't blow anything up today, but this sort of thing really does require a bit of thinking. So perhaps you have some ideas as to how these engines can be connected. It'd be a really cool read, honestly. I mean, maybe there's something that we missed here. I did already explain how this can be ghetto-rigged, but again, it is actually somewhat elaborate. Well, no matter what happens, this should still be pretty interesting. I'll be waiting for your comments, fellas. But for now, that's all I've got. So watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions and comments. Seriously, I'd love to read them. Give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. Just a quick reminder for you that we've released a really cool game for mobile devices. Our game mirrors the life of our very own Garage 54. Hire a crew, purchase equipment for repairing cars, film videos and grow your YouTube fan base. Buy yourself cars and modify them in true Garage 54 fashion, and then enter them into a race. Basically, we've made an excellent simulation of our experiences for you to immerse yourself into. Go ahead and hit the link in the description, download our game, and see you on the racetrack.